Hello, whoever came in. Hey, greetings, welcome. I know not everyone celebrates the holiday, so whether you celebrate the holiday or not, welcome. Thank you for joining. Either way, if you're coming in here in love and light, high vibes and positivity, hello, whoever that was with the hearts there. Hello, hello, hello. Come on in. I hope y'all are doing well. I know, you know, since this is a collective global scale here, some of you coming in are, are preparing for the holiday. Others of you is just a regular, regular day, bitch, right? <laughs> so, but if you're positive, if you're a decent being and you are doing everything that you can to truly transform and become the best version of yourself into a loving being towards yourself and others than to you, I wish you well. Okay, I don't need to know you. I don't need to think like you. I don't need to believe like you. All I need to know is that if you are a being that operates in love and light and justice for all, I have respect for you. Okay, now I want to add some what I call basic tips. Okay, this is for my, my, my compadres out there that, okay, first and foremost, I hope y'all ain't breaking your wallet. OK, I hope you ain't breaking your wallet in your pocket because it's the holidays. I really do. Now, respect, respect to everyone's, you know, various uh, different beliefs there. But let's get to some practicality, especially for those of you who've gone through some major upheavals this year and some major transitions. OK, some of you went through a lot of loss this year and it was due to separating yourself from things that your soul was guiding you to separate from. So now with that being said though, this is what I want to add. Some practical tips, yo. Ah, okay. <laughs> if you are currently in a situation as this year is wrapping up where you know you you getting your, your dollars back together, right? Because depends on your situation. If you've gone through a divorce, then y'all know how that go. OK, divvying up, you know, dividing all of the goods and all that shit. If you lost a job or you ended a job, if you relocated, if, you know, whatever happened that caused um, an economic or financial shift temporarily for you. These are some things as I look back, hindsight in 2020, I didn't know this is what I was doing, but now I see that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was OK, because I was really trying to align with my higher selves and trying to make a lot of changes in my own life. And so you sit down and give yourself a little mini review because some of the stuff that we feel like are absolutes that just has to happen or that we must have in a now moment, it's not as serious as we make it. Now, let me explain. So for an example, those of you out there that are techies, I'm a techie. I love technology. I see how it serves, but I also see that you can get caught up. You want the iPhone 1000. We want the iPad Trazillion or we want the Samsung Galaxy 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 12. Like whatever we get caught. <laughs> we get caught up. I want the best shit. I want Verizon, bitch, AT&T, bitch. I want all, you know what I'm saying? We get on that, right? Ain't nothing wrong with it. However, if you sit down and you think about, and I'm just using this as an example, you can take anything you wish and use it as an example. If you think about it, it's like, okay, hmm. If I put a temporary pause on this, am I going to die? Is it going to, is it going to totally make my world, my day-to-day -day life unbearable if I do not currently in this now moment have that? Am I going to still be able to do the, the practical things in which I need to do, the reasons why in which I use a device or whatever it is? Am I going to still have access to do this? If the answer is yes. Then it's more of a, of a preference, right? Which is Nothing wrong with it. So if you go down your list and start scratching things off, like I could put this on pause for six months. And then as you're doing that, you look at it and go, okay, now I just saved myself 150 bucks, bitch. One, one, <laughs> I just saved myself 150 bucks per month, bitch. That's one. Boom. Scratch. Uh, okay. 
That's, that's one thing. Just let, look at it, though. Look at the practicality of that. Just the cell phone bill. 150 bucks average, okay? So when you put a pause on that, go, okay, this may ding me a little bit, but I can recover from this. I may need to put a pause. Go down your next list. Okay, what's next? Your lifestyle choices. Every last one of us have a preference and taste, but the practicality needs to come in, especially when we're trying to, you know, regain autonomy and regain independence. This is especially important. We may have to put a pause on our lavish tastes. I think my grandmother used to say, and I may be messing it up, but I think she used to make jokes because she was kind of funny well, when she was um, living, but she used to make snarly remarks <laughs> like having Tiffany taste with pick and save money. She used to make you know jokes like that. So we may have to put a temporary pause. OK, maybe for six months, you can even have a plan. It doesn't mean that you're just totally giving up your personal preferences, but it can be something along the lines. OK, for six months. I may feel like I only want to live in this kind of neighborhood and I have to have this kind of house and it has to have this many rooms and I have to have this amount of this and I have to have that, right? Say, okay, well, if this is not something that's fitting in the moment, I may have to reconsider. Am I going to take a hit? Sure, but I can recover. I may have to go for a smaller apartment. I may have to go to an apartment. I know people who will not even live in an apartment. So for some of you, it may be, you know, something like, OK, shit, bitch, boom. I may have to live in an apartment for six months to a year. And with the intention and plan of recovering, especially if it's going to give you a few hundred dollars savings by doing that. So now we have two things that has already created monies back in versus what was being sent out. Right. Cell phone home. Now let's go to transportation. Boom, bitch. Okay. I'm hitting the practicals. I'm doing this for a reason because I know a lot of people out there get caught up holiday season. Bye, bye, bye. Everybody buying, 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 buying party, buy party, buy, buy. And it's like, really? Okay. And then we cry, 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 cry. When we look at the wallet, the wallet, the wallet, the wallet. <laughs> so now we're going to transportation, and I know, they're, especially the gentlemen, they love vehicles, they're toys, all right? Everybody gets caught up in that, ooh, I got this car, I got that car, boom, my car is this, boom, boom, boom. Okay, but is it killing you to keep it, bitch? You might need to reconsider. <laughs> is it a ding? Does it hurt? You know, sure, but you can recover. Do you see my attitude? But you can recover, though. If you have a practical plan, like, okay, for six months or a year, I may need to get a, a lesser value vehicle as long as it's safe and as long as it can run and give up trying to be, you know, stunting and fronting, trying to roll with a BMW bitch and a Mercedes bitch and it's half my check. Because, <laughs> you know, nobody really cares. You know, we be thinking people care, but nobody really cares. So it's like, Maybe I'll have a hit on my credit. I will work on that. I will put that a part of my plan. But in order for me to have a more stable life for the next six months to a year, I need to be a little more practical. My current financial situation may not be conducive to the lavish lifestyle in which I once upon a time lived or that that I want to live. And ain't nothing wrong with that. Our attachments our views about that and our over concern about how this is going to look to motherfuckers that don't matter. Get us caught up in, you know, overexerting ourselves to try to keep that up. They call it keeping up with the Joneses. What is it going to look like if you're not driving this Mercedes? Everybody's going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. So. <laughs> and who are they? Nobody. Right. That matters. So becoming practical in this way, you're going to see 
Like, wow, I'm not stressing the fuck out every month, though. Because I'm not trying to have a $150 cell, cell phone bill. I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know what I'm saying, live in a full bedroom house so I can say I have one. I'm not trying to drive the type of vehicle that my current financial situation is not conducive. I am being practical. I'm still able to do all of the things in which I was going to do with all of the fancy schmancy. Okay. Um, and in some cases now, if your situation even permits, you know, depending on where you choose to live and, and, you know, how accessible things are to you, it could even be putting a pause on a vehicle. If it's doable, if it's feasible, if you're still able to do all the things that you currently have to do without unnecessary stress. Okay. And all with the plan. See, this is all with an intention. It's all with the plan to rebuild your life so that you get back to your personal preferences when you are more comfortable, when you are, have stabilized yourself, especially if you've gone through extreme upheavals, changes and losses. Those are not the times for us to be overly concerned about, am I still you know, flossing like I was, bitch? Well, who cares? <laughs> Shit. Shit. Who cares? You want to be happy. You want to be safe. Peace is something else that's priceless. And I can guarantee you this. I, I saw this happen in my own life. I can guarantee you this. There's nothing like putting yourself in a situation to where you don't feel like first and foremost, you got to kiss asses just to be able to survive. That you don't have to kiss somebody's ass, that you don't have to bend any of your own personal uh, standards, that you don't have to do things that you're not comfortable with. There's nothing like that feeling of that, that kind of autonomy. That you ain't got to sit up and be laying next, sleeping with the enemy, bitch, just so you can eat a bowl of beans, bitch. Like, it's, there's nothing like that. It's priceless. It's also nothing like having your own and it's nothing like positioning yourself in a situation to where you don't have to like work all of your waking hours essentially just to barely have what you have. It's nothing like that because guess what? Now you're putting yourself in a position to first and foremost, heal, journey, rest, have a good time, enjoy life. You know, these are all the things that you can't just put on a spreadsheet. And so when we position our lives like that, it, it does something else for us. You can rest. When you put yourself in this rat race, which is designed to essentially stop you from healing, growing, transforming. Designed to kill you. You can't even fucking enjoy what you're working so fucking hard for. And then if that's the case, what's the point? Just to say you have it so it can look good in theory. I had to learn this. There's nothing wrong with humble beginnings or meager means. It's, it's what we attach to all this stuff. Our worth and our value is far deeper than how big our house is or our cars. It's far deeper than if we have the latest iPhone or Samsung. It's far deeper. Quality of life. I'm sharing all this because it's about the quality of life. Most of us thought and bought into this. If, if I have the more, the more, the more, which more can serve if you're a relatively balanced person. But how many of you know folks that they have the more, but why is it that they're off balance? They have the more, but then why is it that they're super stressed out? They have the more. Then why is it that they too are still in financial ruin? They have the more. Then why, 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 why are they not happy? 
And I'm not talking about the front post that everybody are professional at doing. The front post that we do for social media. Because the more doesn't necessarily mean that. It's balance. It's quality of life. I know people, they got shit, but they stress the fuck out because of what they have to do to have it. And when we take ourselves out of there and go, the only thing I need to be concerned about is, am I becoming the highest version of myself? Am I a decent person? And am I, you know, being the best I can be and giving things all I have? That's the only thing I really need to be truly worried about. But worrying about, oh, I'm this age. And so it's going to look like I'm a loser. Most of these people be losers. And let me tell you why I'm saying this. Authentic winners are not caught up in that low vibration because they're too busy being an authentic winner. So they're not concerned about, okay, you see, you know what I'm saying? Whoop dee whoa, motherfuckers. High school. But they be old. It's high school. Authentic winners are too busy worrying about their own, they own get up. They have no interest. Zero. They're not in the comparison game like that. They know the value of life. They're well-rounded individuals. Usually our over-concern on these things are connected to core wounds to begin with. We didn't have a lot growing up. Or we were conditioned and taught that this, if you have shit, this means you about shit. If you have this and that, that means you have arrived. No, you ain't arrived nowhere. Who are you? Life. Things change. And if you haven't built some type of a strong sense of practicality, a strong sense of self in a healthy sense outside of the attachments of accomplishments, you're going you gonna to crumble. You're going to crumble. The moment life hits, the moment the shit you've relied on to attach your identity to is no longer. When we work on that other stuff, this takes you through all these cycles. I can guarantee it. With grace and elegance. Because you know that you are not your surroundings. You're not your circumstances. You understand that it's about who you are in it that determines who you are. Who you are in it. How do you handle all these changes? How do you handle the loss? How do you handle the conflict? How do you handle the seemingly failure? How do you deal with that? See, that's what determines who you are for real. We can be, we can all be our best versions of ourselves when all the shit we want. <laughs> yeah, we can be and appear to be. Somebody says very true. We can be and appear to be that as long as we got the cushy. Come on, let's just be on the for real status. When you ain't, when all the shit is like how you want boom, bitch, grinning, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Smiling, get, giving away chicken, tacos and everything. You know what I'm saying? But the moment, the moment where we have built our identity the moment that takes a good, good enough hard hit, who are we? See, I'm asking you guys to challenge yourself in that way. Who are you? Because see, when that, that's going to show you, you in this moment, who are you? When things are not fair, every being on earth is going to experience some shit, bitch, on some level, bitch, that we say ain't fair. Then who are you? Because that's going to tell you about you. It's going to give you your true frequency. 
Can you, can you transform through that and recreate with dignity and honor? And with all regard and respect to all life? Or do you slip into something else? Practicality, <clears throat> and I'm not talking about being a penny pincher, and I'm not talking about being, um, there's a difference. I'm talking about wisdom and balance, giving yourself room and space so that you can have quality of life, that's all. I've been around the world, like I tell you all the time, Bloomy is not the age people think Bloomy is. I've seen all walks of life, up close and personal, all cultures, all nations, all ethnicities, all socioeconomic backgrounds and statuses. I've seen this. <laughs> this is why I talk the way I talk. We want to be the people that can handle economic crash, at least in terms of this 3D, without needing to kill people off so that we can survive. We want to be the kind of people that don't need to destroy others so that we can win. Those are the type of people that we want to be trying to become more and more each day. Yes, we will defend ourselves. I'm going to advocate that because that's been a part of my life's um, lessons as well is though you may not be a being that seeks to destroy, but you will defend to the death because of your right to be. But that's not the goal. That's not the focus. So in other words, you know, self-defense, right? If, they, if they're coming for you, you take them out. It's that simple. But we don't live our life based this way. Our lives is about, you know, healing, learning, growing, evolving, being balanced, learning you know, important principles about life, respecting the self, but respecting beings. I don't need you to lose so that I can win. I win based on my own soul's journey. I don't need you to be less attractive than me. And then what is that? It's perspective. It's subjective. I don't need that though. I don't need it so that I can feel pretty. I don't need it. This is when we know we're growing. I don't need an entourage. This is when we know we're growing. I don't need to hate on you, beautiful souls out there. I don't need to hate on you in order for me to feel like I'm going to be okay. I don't need to hate on your business in order for me to feel like mine is going to be okay. See, this is maturity. This is quality of life. This is where we're going. I don't need to compare myself to you. I don't need to, you know, old saying like what, the, what men used to do is like people who's, you know, <laughs> who penis, <laughs> who's got, you know, I, I don't need to do that. Who's got the biggest penis or whatever. Like, oh, really? I don't need. I know who I am. And when we truly start vibrating that and align to that no matter what seasons, it makes it easier for us to do the things in which I'm sharing today. 
realizing that you're not here to compare your life to no one in the first place. This has been a part of the issue to fucking begin with. A lot of these people we look at that we think has it all together. I promise you, if you were a fly on a wall, you would know something different. Because nobody truly have it all together. <laughs> Everybody is presenting. They ain't giving you the full vigil. They're giving you the victory wheel, bitch. They ain't giving you the real shit. <laughs> Pine the scene, bitch. The tears, the fighting, bitch. You know what I'm saying? All sorts of shit. They ain't, ain't nobody telling you that. They ain't telling you that. This is why I say it's futile. Because you have no idea of what's really going on in people's lives outside of the social media post. How many of us are going to be posting shit when we crying, bitch? Like, I'm just being honest. I'm trying to make it funny. But like... How, how many of us, and I'm not talking about the crying where it's the fake crying so people can get the sympathy kind of shit. And so y'all know where I'm going because that's a new trending thing as well. But how, how many of us are going to be on, on live, bitch, on, you know, unedited, uncut, where you like sitting there talking, you talking to your spirit guys, bitch, you like, I damn motherfucker. Oh, shit. Like who finna be recording? <laughs> Who gonna be recording that shit when you piss, bitch? And you be like, one more time. Behind the scene, all the shit. Nobody sees this. And when you're hurting because you suffered an injustice or when you watch your children that suffered an injustice because of these the freaking lunatics out there running around rampant and shit with suits on and shit, bitch. Like they normal and shit. <laughs> weirdos you know what I'm saying nobody sees this so stop caring and I know that it's easier said than done sometime but if all I can tell you is if you're trying you're giving it all you got and I'm talking about if you are at the beginning stages of awakening intermediate it no matter what if you're new to awakening and you're trying to change your life and in retrospect, you realize that you were on a path of fuckery. But if you're trying to give it all you have, no matter who's around you and what the fuck they doing or not doing. Don't allow your past or people to try to use your past because this is a tactic to keep you. Or to, to make you feel low because now you ain't, you know, living the lavish. Most of them are breaking their fucking back, selling their souls or their private parts to have it. Be at peace. Humble beginnings. But is it peace? Do you have your autonomy back where you ain't got to kiss ass and deal with motherfuckers you don't want to deal with? You get to sit and enjoy a cup of coffee without worrying about who trying to steal some shit from you today, bitch, because they snakes. Who plotting on your death and your kids because they're weirdos and shit, bitch, 2022 weirdos. See, this is what I'm saying. The peace, the quality of life you get when you, 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 can, you put your life and your, your lifestyle in a, in a way that you don't have to overly exert. These people want you overly exerted, by the way. I've been saying this. This is why they don't be wanting you to have certain living conditions. This is why they try to trap you up. This is why they try to have you under their thumb for those who try that communal narcissist approach. Because they don't want you to have a quality of life outside of them. So 
take inventory. Okay. Does it mean you lose people? Yeah. Some people who was getting checks, I'm going to say this too, because I know there's a group of people out there that um, was getting, you know, um, child support checks or, or certain things like that, that I want to, I want to say illegally. I don't know if that's the right term to use, but situations to where, you know, it was a deal made between both biological parents and that's lorded over you though. This is why I tell people, man, you better get in a place where you don't care that you let shit go. I had to do it. When my son was young, this is before his father passed away. This is when he was little, 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 I mean, little, little. And his father was, uh, at that time anyway, he was with living with the woman and building a life and wooty woo. And it was a little bit far from us. They had a very different lifestyle than me and my son. And as you all know, I've shared this, my son is different, right? And so I had to take all of these things into account as a young mother. I had to learn early and I had to go through certain changes to get more knowledge and understanding. And I became, at some point in my son's life, I became very protective after I started changing my life. Once I changed my life, then I became very super protective. And whether it was his father or not, I didn't care. I became super, super guarded and protective about who and what he was going to be around, especially if it wasn't close to me where I can get to him. So I, I had to uphold the law. We had mediators, you know, so I, I had to be fair in that respect. But my primary focus was too on my son. He was of a certain age where he can say whether or not he wanted to do something. And because at that time, I thought my son's father was in a different energy and I know what it was about. I wasn't having that. <laughs> I remember this. I wasn't having that because at the end of the day, all I cared about was the well-being of my son. I didn't care about the check. I didn't care about none of that. So I remember going to the local district attorney's office. And they had me to sign some kind of form or statement or whatever, relinquishing something. I can't remember the exact form, but I did that because I meant business. I did. I remember that. I was like, oh, you will not have control over me and my son. This is not how it's going to work. We will not be using the law or money in this way. I'm concerned about my son's comfortability. He has autism. You're not worried about that at this time, but I am. If he is not comfortable, I'm uncomfortable as a mother pushing him to do it. So I was like, no, nah, bitch, that changed the game. Now, I'm not advising everybody to go there. I'm just saying I'm sharing these things because people often feel like they don't have choices. But we have choices and it's often choices we may not want to make. Because I wasn't going to be controlled. I know what people do. Money is one of the primary things people use to control you. And I wasn't having it. So when we're ready, I knew that it meant, y'all think I didn't know? I knew what it meant. I knew it meant that whatever amount of whatever he was getting at that time, he wasn't going to get it no more. The only thing that he was going to be able to get was the rears because, his, you know, at that time, his father was like super, super quadruple way behind. But he wasn't going to be able to get anything other than the rears, what was due. I knew that. And I didn't care. And I just trusted and believed in my path that I would be okay my son will be okay, that we will be okay somehow. I'll figure out something. And I guess what? And lo and behold, we did. And, and most, the most thing I'm really trying to perpetuate here is like, 
I was free and liberated. I didn't feel like I had to do stuff and be sitting there holding my head and worried about my son because I knew, you know what I'm saying, at the time of the kind of lifestyle that his father lived at that time, I knew, you know what I'm saying, what he was around. I knew my son wasn't comfortable and I knew he didn't want to be there. If my son, any time that he wanted to go, then I was comfortable. When he was comfortable, I was comfortable. But when he wasn't comfortable, neither was I. And I didn't want to be made to feel like he didn't have a choice or that I didn't have a choice because of paper. So I took back control. These are all little things for those of you who deal with that type of shit as well. You take a hit, but you certainly empower yourself. You certainly liberate yourself and you free yourself. And then you find out that you can co-create. You don't have to be codependent. Because this is what people use. I'm telling y'all, it's called communal narcissists. People who use their goods, money, resources, whatever it is, to have some type of access to you, tied to you, control over you. Please use wisdom and balance and discernment as it applies to you. But we always have more options than we really think. It's about reassessing our lives. And the true core issue is most of the time we don't want to make the changes that's going to be necessary. It's not that we don't have choices. It's just that the choices we may currently have will require some type of a reduction. So question yourself what's important to you. Sit with that. Evaluate that. Be real about that. But for somebody that has done the things in which I'm saying to you all, I can tell you, I don't regret it. It's nothing like peace. There's nothing like autonomy. There's nothing like, you know, feeling liberated and free, feeling like you don't got to be in the rat race, that you ain't got to overexert yourself because you ain't trying to keep up with somebody. You ain't got to kiss people ass just so you can have somewhere to lay your head. You ain't got to sell your soul, your check, your everything just to have some half a piece of shit. Be around energies that are toxic for you that you don't want to be around. It's nothing like it. That's priceless. Okay. All right, guys. So that's the end of this discussion. The practical tips that I have. Holidays, changing your life. Don't break your wallet. Be practical and grounded. You are far worth. You are far more valuable than Raymond. <laughs> You're far more valuable than this 3D illusion, than stuff. Your life, your soul is far more valuable. Yes, you need somewhere to be. You want to be practical. You want to take care of yourself. You want to use wisdom. All those good old things. So I'm not implying you shouldn't care. I'm implying that you need to reevaluate what you care about. <laughs>